Hello, and welcome to Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures on here in the UK at least is a bank holiday Monday. I missed the filming yesterday, it was so windy that I couldn't get a location here to film without the wind disturbing the microphone. In fact, it's still quite windy today, so fingers crossed we'll get away with it and uh, well, we'll carry on as quickly as possible. It's great to have you all on board, thank you for your messages, lovely to see some new subscribers. So welcome to Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures. Cheers. I know, I know in my introduction, I forgot to say, sit back, relax, put your feet up, have a cuppa, cheers everyone, and enjoy today's show. Well, it's, a, as I said, Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK, and it's quite quiet generally, actually. It's been nice to come down. Uh, it's weather-wise, well, as I say, it's windy, uh, a little bit overcast. It's not too bad, I'm in my t-shirt, but then again, I am digging over the allotment, trying to get all the weeds up, digging right down to the roots, and uh, it's, uh, well, it's, it's a task and a half. Because, of course, as you all know, the bindweed has come back and it's ferocious this year because my neighbours on either side um, are not keeping it under control and well, it's just spreading and it's coming in. And it's no matter how fast I clear it at the moment, luckily, most of it's on the surface. And I've got a pile here next to me that's going to be dried out separately to the normal weeds because if they're normal weeds, I can mulch them up and they can go on the compost heap take the roots out if possible but they still can go on the compost heap which is a brilliant thing lovely greenery and there's some woody bits in there that'll be shredded too we'll get that done later today or tomorrow there's no rain due and uh, well speaking of no rain actually it's been very very hard to dig up and get to the roots because the soil is absolutely dry as a bone well it is on the surface and even when i dig down it's not that moist it's quite uh, loose as a soil some, it's, some of it is compacted, even though it's not been walked on very much this year. It's just not got any moisture because we've not actually, believe it or not, we've had downpours of rain, but we've not had actually rain over a long period of time. So, uh, well, that was, I'm sure it's going to change as we head towards the September uh, in, into the last week here in August in the UK. And, uh, well, as I said, everything seems to be very green, even though we've not had much rain. So, yes, now, this is a dock leaf. Uh, it's great for when you get stung by nettles and if I came down the day short sandals all those things back to my yeah and uh, oh, there was one over there it got the bottom of my leg oh my goodness me you forget sometimes how much it stings you and uh, although as a kid I used to make that that's a kid when I was younger I used to make nettle wine and there was a way of picking nettles and I can't remember uh, you can pick them without gloves and they'll not sting you I know incredible isn't it but when you brush past them Oh, my God. Anyway, this was here. Uh, this is why I'm saving this particular one, because I think it's the only one on the allotment at the moment. And so that's very, very precious, because that must have antiseptic properties in there. Break the leaves up, get a bit mushy, rub it on. Fantastic. Soon calms it down. Now, when I was tying up, you know I've had problems with my lavender, my nanan's lavender. We'll come to that shortly, because I've had some advice about that. And uh, well, we'll go to the advice. I found this little beauty. Look at that, hidden away in amongst the, the weeds that have grown up, and it's got a little purple shoot on it. So I can't wait because that I'm going to put somewhere very special in the allotment. And uh, fingers crossed, I mean, it's in this tub at the moment, but again, I didn't know it was there, I'd forgot about this actually, which is not very good, is it? And uh, well. Let's take some of those out there, just roots. That, that'll be put into new compost and fed. All these dead parts here will be cut back. Um, we'll get rid of all those in the hope then that it will come back stronger than ever. In fact, if I just do that, look. Oops, move that around a bit. That is the plant. This bit must be from another plant. So that's the plant. That's another plant. Might look at that, cut it back, see if there's any life in it. Looks a bit dead, the piece I've just broken off there. But, as I said, we've got some advice. Actually, that feels pretty, pretty bendy, that one. So we'll have a look at that. So, yes, isn't that nice? Got a new piece of lavender. Oh, let's hope it survives 50 odd years like the last one did. Marvellous. 
never leave your cup of tea under a plant that you're looking at. You've now got lavender bits in. Oh well, cheers anyway. I'm going to move over to over there to show you what else I've been up to. As I said, clearing out lots of things actually, getting rid of all the weeds. I've got a pile of weeds over here. I've got a pile of um, the bindweed and that will be burnt separately as I was saying. Here's where I've had, I've had my potatoes and I've been generally getting some potatoes out when and if needed. So I'm leaving these ones here next to me. They are dying off so I'll have to get them out pretty shortly. There's a couple in the background, they're still going nicely. Now here next to me, I don't know if you can see it now, I've got my, my lovely legs in the way, um, we have some potatoes. And there's some lovely, look at that, beautiful potatoes. Absolutely. Now these are the home guard variety. Did I say, uh, remember, these were for the war effort, uh, high yielding, and uh, I'm really, really pleased with them. Generally, all have come up, and uh, which is rather, rather brilliant, and it's great to see it. As I said, it's a lovely all-rounder. It makes absolutely fantastic mash. So I shall be looking out for this next year, and may put a few other plants in next year, and... Uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So, so pleased with it. Potatoes, great, all rounder here. As I was talking about the salad blue ones earlier, I've been digging up and uh, normally you get one potato. Speaking of one potato, this is a Cara variety potato and it's grown just from one potato that obviously left in ground. And uh, I've just got one off it. And here's a photograph, look at that. And uh, that's a country, we had some off this and it's really, really, again, a really lovely potato salad blues those purple variety potatoes well i was amazed i dug one i think or two plants up maybe and i got this amount of potatoes uh, it's a bit odd i still don't know what to do with them they taste all right they taste nice um if you cut them in half though and uh, put them in boiling water then the color just seeps out and they get a really horrible light purple color so what I might do is have them as roast potatoes. Bit odd colour, I know, but I'm going to put them in the oven and roast them. So that would be quite nice. Might do that today and we'll see whether people like them or not. It's funny, isn't it? I think it's that thing, isn't it? They once tried, I think, green tomato sauce uh, and no one bought it. Because I think your mind can't cope with it. It's tomato sauce, it should be red and not green. It's funny what the mind does when we see things. Um, why anybody would want those purple potatoes except for a bit of variety, a bit of variation on your salad, um, then possibly that's it. But as a mashed potato, it says it's an all-rounder, and I have made mash, but no, never never again, never again. Although I've got quite a few off, as I say. Yes, these home guard potatoes, absolutely brilliant. Just behind me here, I have been sorting out the old lavender. Look, it's actually gone, it's as dry as a bone, but it's still smells beautiful and it used to attract the bees speaking of attracting bees i was near my uh, raspberries the other day just taking some of the bindweed off and well i had a little bee come to visit and here's a little video there he is going into one of the flowers here obviously that create the raspberries and it was so lovely to see and uh, well he's not come back yet today i've been down here pottering and i've only seen the one well, here I am in my favourite space in the allotment because I can see the whole allotment, it's really nice. French tarragon here, chilli peppers here and some beautiful raspberries coming all around me actually. There's lots on, oops, hello. Sorry, I shouldn't grab the leaf really, but there you go. Uh, lots on this one too, we're picking those in a moment. But before I go, let's pop off, shall we, down to Hastings to Katia and Sean. And Katia, thank you once again for the photographs, absolutely brilliant. And you remind me that you've been growing uh, these lovely, lovely, beetroots look at these absolutely golden burpee i think they're called or this is what you've told me anyway and uh, well you you actually love them but you saute the leaves ah brilliant and they taste absolutely fantastic and then you're growing this one and this is a calabri now, i've probably spelt said that wrong but there you go that's a yorkshireman for you i'm not, not very good at saying some of the words um and i've not i've never grown it and i've never had it actually but you say it's a little like um a cross between a turnip and a potato so it's got undertones of potato in there and what you've done is uh, you've, you've just done it in the air fryer with a bit of a garlic rub and some uh, salt and pepper and there you have it sprinkled with some parmesan it sounds absolutely delicious i may have to try next year you know i try a new plant every year i won't well, never know next year but very unusual may have to go for something like that you do report however 
but your uh, cavolo nero your your dark cabbage uh, unfortunately has been uh, well the white cabbage butterfly has been around laid its eggs and within well it seems matters of minutes doesn't it that it's completely destroyed your plants luckily you've had loads and loads off in the past so you're, you're not too upset you've dug them out and uh, you did ask what it could go in that place well uh, it, because it's root you can stick some root vegetables in so some carrots and turnips all those things can replace uh, the cabbages completely different family of course and so the rotation continues and you can still put potatoes in now i'm just taking mine out um, oh it's lovely my one bumblebee is back well, it's not a bumblebee exactly but it's a bee and it's come for the pollen and thanks to that little thing we have lovely raspberries keep subscribe oh don't forget keep subscribe oh, bang that's it hit the microphone why don't you keep subscribing great to have you on board and once again thank you for watching jeremy's yorkshire allotment adventures well i'll see you very shortly Ta-da for now